In this video, we learn about load balancing. At a high level, if you're a software engineer and you want to know what is load balancing, how is it going to help me? Well, if you have multiple computers and you want to make sure that the load is distributed evenly so that none of the computers is overheated, then this is what you want to do. Let's say you're a backend engineer who writes some code and this code is exposed using APIs. Uh, the APIs are hit by multiple people around the globe. Initially, your service is small. The number of customers you have is less. So a single computer, maybe even the laptop you work on is sufficient as a server. So you expose APIs over HTTP. Any person with an internet address can come and connect with your computer and they're able to use the code that you've written for their purposes. So at this point, you have a server, which is the computer you have and the clients are people who are connecting to your computer, hitting the API and getting a response. Eventually, as the number of customers increase, there is going to be a lot of load on this system. It may not be able to manage the number of connections it needs to. It may not have enough memory. It may not have enough IO. Whatever be the case, at some point you'll need to scale up as your customers increase. A simple way to do this is to buy a better computer. Let's say you shut down your current computer and you take a bigger computer, copy the code there, turn it on, and now you have the same APIs being exposed over the internet to a larger set of users who are happy because this computer has more compute power, more memory, things are working fine. And hopefully this cycle is going to repeat. You'll have more and more customers come to you. They'll pay you more money. But the problem is you need more compute capacity. You need more strength in your system. Uh, so you buy a bigger computer, but eventually you will run out of the ability to buy a larger computer. You can go all the way up to a supercomputer, but for very large applications, I'm talking about, let's say Google meta and even, you know, medium sized companies, which are payment gateways, a single supercomputer won't work. Apart from buying a larger computer, which is vertical scaling, the other approach you have to scale is horizontal scaling, which is buying more computers. And now the challenge is because you have more than one computer, uh, you have to route the incoming request to one of these computers. So what strategy should you apply? It makes sense to distribute this incoming load to the existing computers evenly. Why? Because if you have a computer which fails, then the blast radius is low. The worst case computer crash is not very bad. Okay. You lose at most half the load. The second thing is if you have a lot of requests going to a single computer, that computer is considered hot because there's a lot of requests which get queued up that queue wait time increases while in the rest of the computers, it's, it's green. There's nothing happening there. So a lot of users are wastefully waiting on previous requests to be completed while the other computers are sitting idle despite chugging that much electricity. And this task of load balancing is handled by a specialized component called a load balancer. What this does is for every incoming request, it decides on which computer should this request be routed to. It doesn't necessarily need to be between you and the clients, between the servers and the clients. Uh, it could be maybe telling the clients separately. It could be telling the servers separately because the servers need to talk to each other also. And there is load balancing there. But at a high level, there is a routing brain, which decides the final destination of a request. Now there's some load balancing algorithms, which are very common. I'll go through the simple ones. Uh, there are also other complex load balancing algorithms. We'll meet them across the course. The first load balancing algorithm that we talk about is a very simple one. It's called round robin. And all you have to do here is that you have a set of computers. Uh, you go over them one by one for every incoming request. So the first incoming request is sent to computer number one. The second one is sent to computer number two. The third one is sent to computer number three. If you have just two, then you know, you'll take a module or two and again, come back to computer number one. So in this way, there is a iteration through the entire list. And then you come back to the start and you keep doing this. This helps you roughly evenly balance load. A clear benefit of this is that it's simple. Uh, another clear benefit is that you don't need to maintain any state as the load balancer doesn't need to think about, oh, how much load is there on computer number one? It just goes through all the computers according to a single current pointer that it has. The second approach you can apply is a geo based approach. All users from India are sent to the Indian server. All users from the U S are sent to the U S server. All users from Europe are sent to the Europe server and so on based on regions, based on which computer is near you you are routed to that. 
the benefit of this is that usually the response times are low. Uh, there's also the clear benefit that you don't need to think about how much load a computer has. You just look at what's nearby. Okay, the response time of that was the least. Let's send the request over there. One of the drawbacks could be that despite the US server having very little load and the Indian server having tremendous load, you're going to take the rest of the Indian users and send them again to the Indian server. So this doesn't do even distribution in case you have skewed load. And the final algorithm we'll talk about is least connections. Least connections is interesting because here you have some state that is maintained by the load balancer. Okay, so you actually note down the number of connections that each server has. So that would be, let's say 30 connections in the first server, 40 connections in the next server. When you have an incoming request, you look at the server which has the least number of connections and route the request there. So from 30, that moves to 31. Now you may have a drop in the number of connections in the second computer. It's possible that people left the service, they logged off. If you have a further drop, eventually service A is going to be more heavily loaded than service B in terms of the number of connections. And the least connection algorithm is going to send the next incoming request to the server having just 25 connections, okay, which is the second server. Now in the real world, you usually have a hybrid approach and you may have multiple load balancers at a high level, if you're looking for Google, you go to the Indian servers over there. You say, Hey, I want to go to Google calendar. So then you find the least connection, Google calendar server. And in Google calendar, you may have services themselves, like maybe a profile service it might be part of Google calendar over there. You might have a round robin. So at a high level, you have a large tree and each of the nodes of the tree have their own algorithm running. That is very much possible. In fact, sometimes you have a vendor like AWS who's managing load balancing at a, at a DNS level or at the application gateway level, and you have your own load balancer before the database, before the cache and so on. Load balancing is a fundamental concept of computer science. It comes up very, very often in distributed systems uh, and it comes up at every layer of the distributed system. Whenever there is a set of resources, whenever there's horizontal scaling, there is the concept of routing, which comes up and the concept of optimally using the resources that you have load balancing is a common technique. If you have any suggestions or doubts on this topic, please let me know in the comments. And if you like the video, please hit the like button. I'll see you next time.